Hi, this is Shelly Hitz, and today we're going to talk about book marketing with teleseminars. This is part of the audio author series, where I'm going to share with you how you can use audio to market your book, as well as create an audio book. So let's get right into the teleseminars. What can you do with teleseminars? Well, you can do a lot of things. You can actually use a teleseminar to introduce your new books or products. Maybe you come out with a new book and as part of the launch, you offer a free teleseminar and people can come on and they can hear kind of the background story of your book and what created, you know, what why you decided to write that book. So it's a great way to introduce new books or products. It's you can also use teleseminars to get known in a new market and to get to know that market in in return. And so um, it's a way that Maybe if you do interviews and you interview well-known people in a market and then they invite all of their people from their list, you can get known in that market. It's also a way that you can explain how a product or service works. So let's say you're a nonfiction author and you also offer a service to your customers. You can use the teleseminar to talk about how that product or service works. Like I said, you can interview experts and um, they can share their knowledge with your audience. This is a great way to, to give information to your audience, but also to connect and network with others in your niche. You can also use it to answer questions about your area of expertise. Now this is especially useful for nonfiction authors, but for fiction authors, you can use it as like a Q&A. Maybe you've gotten a lot of similar questions from your readers through email or social media. Um, and you can answer those on a teleseminar or maybe you ask your audience what kind of questions do you have for me or maybe they have questions about a certain character in your books and you can talk more about that. So you can use these to sell more books. You can actually do a special offer on the teleseminar. Maybe in addition, you know, if they buy your book, you know, if they forward you to you their receipt, you can send them a bonus of some sort, maybe a digital bonus that won't cost you anything to send to them, but it makes them want to buy your book right then and there because you're offering a special time sensitive bonus on the teleseminar. You can also use teleseminars to create products. So by having that teleseminar, you automatically get the recording from the audio as well as you can have it transcribed. And in the report, I give several different resources that you can use to transcribe your audios. And so you can have an instant product. You have the audio and the report from the transcription. You can also use it as a way to get to know your audience. If you open up the lines, you can interact, you can talk with people, and you can get a chance for them to get to know you. Um, you can share more of your personality, and it's just a great way to establish yourself, especially if you're interviewing different experts and different people in your field people then start to look to you as an expert. And that's one of the things that I had done with the Facebook Marketing for Authors Telesummit. You can also build your list. Once you have people sign up for, you know, to get access to the teleseminar, it's a way to build your newsletter list. If you don't have a newsletter list, I highly recommend that you start one. I use AWeber and I love it. Um, it does cost and so it, it, you know, it does have a fee. If you don't have the money to invest into a newsletter yet, I would recommend starting with something like MailChimp.com and get started at least building your list and begin emailing people so that you can provide that repetitive contact with them and begin building a relationship. Begin truly wanting to get to know the people in your list. And then a teleseminar also just creates trust. As people get to know you, as they realize you're a real person, you're not just this person behind this pen name or, you know, and that there's a real person there and they get to, to want to trust you and that creates, um, you know, people will buy things from someone that they know, like, and trust. So people, get, you know, can become to that point where they get to like you and they get to trust you, they also get to know you and so that could help you definitely sell more books. So I want to let you know over the last few years I have definitely been on a shoestring budget and because of this I have looked and looked and researched and researched tons of free teleseminar tools and the one that's my favorite is freeconferencing.com. 
there are tons of reasons that I like freeconferencing.com. Now you can use other free conference tools and I've provided a list of those for you, but it's my recommendation and from my research this is what I personally use and this is what I'm going to show you how to use today is freeconferencing.com. Why do I like it so much? Well, first of all, you can host up to 1,000 callers, and it allows you to record up to six hours of call time. So that's plenty of space. Most people don't need anything more than 1,000 callers and six hours of call time. So that's a great start. The thing I really love about freeconferencing.com is they provide free web-based controls, and you can control everything from your computer. Um, they also have an iPhone app that you can control the call, but it is amazing, and I'm going to walk you through those web-based controls today. You also are able to broadcast pre-recorded audio. So this is brilliant for if you're going to do an interview and you're wanting to interview someone that's very busy. You know, for instance, for the Facebook Marketing for Authors Telesummit, several of my speakers are very, very busy. And for instance, John Kramer. To get him to be able to come onto the call at a very specific time and do the call live would have been very difficult with his schedule. But because I could pre-record the interview, I could work around his schedule and then I could broadcast that audio at the time of the telesummit. And you know, everyone still gets the great information, but we're able to work around his schedule. And so that's great. The other thing that you get with freeconferencing.com, which is amazing, is that you get a recording that you can download. So you get the MP3 that you can edit, you can use it for a product, but they also give you a replay link. So I'll show you how you can set that up. And what you can do is you can basically set it to expire after a certain amount of days. And that's what I did with the Telesummit. So I gave people at least three days to be able to listen to the replay link. I told them they'd have up to 48 hours, but I usually gave them an extra day just in case. You can let that, um, that expired a certain time or you can leave it open for people to come back and listen to the recording anytime. So that was an amazing feature that I love from freeconferencing.com. Another great feature is that attendees can call in with Skype. Now with the internet, people are coming to my website are attending these teleseminars internationally and so to avoid long distance calls and even people that are in the United States you know that don't have a great long distance calling system or limited minutes on their cell phone they can call in with Skype it doesn't cost them anything and they can still get the information and be live on the call freeconferencing.com also offers Q&A sessions which I'll show you how that works screen sharing and more so it's a really amazing tool and I highly recommend that you try it out so let's go check it out we're gonna go over to freeconferencing.com and this is the screen that you get in the beginning now when you first sign up you're gonna have to um, click the get free service and you're gonna have to sign up for an account now I already have an account so I'm just going to log into my account, but this is where you're going to sign up. Very easy to sign up, start your account, and get started. So this here is the web-based controls that I was telling you about, and it is just brilliant. And so what I want to show you are a few of the features that they have. One of the things you'll notice here is they have a caller ID, the caller name, the call begin, duration, role and then you can um, see these other things you can add in here. You actually can see the person's phone number and their name if their phone number is listed. So you, you get that information. You can also tell um, if they're on Skype, um, where they're calling in from. And then you can tell how long they've been on the call. So you can you can see on the top right hand corner it says total active calls. So you know if if you have a hundred people on the call, you can see that. If you have one person on the call, you can see that. A lot of the free tools out there, you have no idea. And if people aren't speaking up, if they're not interacting with you, you have no idea how many people are on the call. So what you do is um, all of your information for your calls is right here and you can always check that if you lose it. But to go to a live conference you click the on. And I'm going to go ahead and click the conference lock because that will mean that nobody can get in to my conference during this time. And so um, what you can see is that already you know it shows the moderator console. 
I put it on lock so that way nobody accidentally comes into the, the room while we're doing this session. Now I'm going to call on my phone and I'm going to show you what it looks like when somebody calls in. But you can see onto the left is a lot of the controls that you'll need for your call. Um, you have the recording. You can start the recording at any time. Um, you have a hold button. And this was a tip that I did not learn at first. <laughs> My first couple conferences that I did, I did not realize um, if you come and start the conference and open the room up before you know, before it's to start, like say, you know, for instance, you're starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, and you come in there at 7.50, it's going to be silence. And so, you know, if you are, um, there, you can see I signed in, um, but if you are coming on early, then what you need to do is you can put them on hold, and if you click the on button on the hold, basically they're just going to hear background music. And so if you want to have people be able to get into the room, but just be on hold, you can do it that way. And so if you use the hold key, what you need to do then is once you're ready to start, just take them off the hold key. And the other thing you can do is if you want certain people to be on hold, you can just check mark them and they will be on hold until you're ready to start. You can see as well that we have the recording and you can start that at any time by just clicking on and that will then create a recording and you can see down here at the bottom you know you're they're starting to to hear from me and um, then that will create a recording for you now um, what I do recommend is using the mute mode once you're getting ready to present your information because what can happen in some free conferencing um, call um, providers they don't have really a way to control this and um, what happens is people get on the call and they forget to mute themselves so you you know some some systems you have to individually mute yourself well if they forget to mute themselves and they're doing something in the background they're making a lot of noise then that interferes with your presentation and this actually happened to me where I was invited to be on a conference call and to share a presentation and during my presentation somebody got on the call they were not muted the person that was running the, the call did not have this control this web-based control to mute them and it was very distracting. It was very um, frustrating for me as a speaker because I was trying to talk over them. And she had to stop and ask several times, you know, if you have not muted yourself, mute yourself. <laughs> so this is great. What you can do is you can actually go over to lecture. That way you're in lecture mode. You don't have to worry about anyone causing any background information. So I highly recommend that what you do is you first um, come into live conference mode and go on then you go to lecture mode and then you turn the recording on so in that step turn the conference on and then once you're ready to start go to lecture mode and then do the recording so that way you're making sure you don't have any extra background noise to your recording and so you can also um, be able you know to do the Q&A down here you can turn that on and then the callers can press a certain number and they can um, you know, ask for Q&A. And you can um, see who's wanting to, to ask a question. And then you can call on them individually. So the, the amazing thing is you have the control to all of these web controls. Well, let's go ahead and turn the recording off. And let's turn the conference off. We're going to go ahead and discon disconnect all of these callers. And what you'll be able to do then is go to History and Recordings. And you can see here, here's the My Recording from this time. You can click on Recording. And then what you will do is you'll be able to see a list of participants as well as be able to start listening to the recording. And so you can download the recording. If you click here, this is going to download it. You can save that MP3 to your computer or you can share the recording and this is where you can share a replay link which is just brilliant so you can say okay if I want three days you can put that in here display custom color names I usually put no for people's privacy now you can allow for the person to download it I personally do not allow for the download because then I 
offer these products you know for a, a fee later but you can offer to download those there and you can put a description teleseminars rock so um, then you just click generate URL and it gives you the URL so you just copy that and you can send that out to your list. You can also, I'm going to copy and paste this in. You can test it out yourself. And what it does is it comes up then with the, um, with the replay. And what, what you can do then is you can um, scroll it ahead you know, to listen to it. it. It tells you how many participants were on the call at different times. And um, you can then offer this. It says right here, playback expiration date. And um, it's just, it's really amazing that they offer all of this for free. Um, you can set um, preferences, and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I have done. I have put entry and ex exit tones as off because I use the web-based controls and I can see when people are coming in and out. Um, I also put wait for host as off. Um, you can change that, and they have um, little things that you can say, see as far as what each one of these means. It says conferences start when the first participant arrives. Hosts need not be present. Um, on is place participants on hold for a selected preset time before the host joins the conference call. If the host does not join, participants will be disconnected. So that may be something that you want to do, um, you know, as well. Um, you can announce the caller count if you want, and um, participants can see all attendees. Again, I have that off for privacy reasons, as well as active speakers. Um, I have that off, although you can put that on if you want. Um, presenter transfer by particip participants. Um, I think that one, let's see what that says. Yeah, so you can, that just means that I could transfer, if I was doing a screen sharing, I could transfer that to others. Um, they have great help and everything. So this is a great feature, and I really recommend that you get started with freeconferencing.com. Um, one of the other things that you can do, um, on the right-hand side, you'll see the broadcaster and the screen sharing tabs. If you click on the broadcaster tab, You'll look here, you can either broadcast recordings that you've recorded before, or you can upload files. And you can see for the, the Facebook Marketing for Authors Telesummit, I uploaded my files. I did just a little bit of editing, and so then what you do if you want to broadcast one of these is you just click the play button. Oh, it must be live. So let's go ahead and turn this on so I can show you how this works. And then you just press the play button. And then what we'll do is we'll automatically start broadcasting that audio. And so that's all you have to do um, if you want to broadcast an audio. Now, you, like I said, you can broadcast recordings as well that you want um, to do. You can just record it ahead of time on there. If you don't want to do any editing or anything like that, you can just broadcast it that way. And they have the screen sharing right now. You do need to use um, the screen sharing application um, to do that, and um, that's a whole nother module that you can learn as well. But this is Shelly, and I encourage you to start using teleseminars for your book marketing efforts. I hope this has been helpful for you, and um, go to freeconferencing.com, sign up for a free account, and schedule your first teleseminar today.